Hello, Gopna. The learning targets for today. I can find a point of continuity given a function or a track. I think spans every time turn the pop is to go back down. Okay? I can find a point of continuity given a function or a graph. I can identify points of discontinuity with a function or a graph. And let's get started. This, to me, gets a little bit easier. The explanations and the terminology are going to be like, what, Vista? Trust me. <laughs> continuity at a point. Okay? Continuity at a point. Well, obviously, if you have a graph and it doesn't go on forever, you have endpoints, right? Like if I have some graph and it goes like this, well, we know that goes on forever. But what happens if there are points here and it does not, but that's an endpoint. This graph does not go on forever. So you have your interior points. Your interior points would be every single point that makes up this line. Those are your interior points. And your end points, well, that would be the last point on your line segment. Is that what it is for you guys? Come on, geometry people. Oh, son. Now, a function, y, uh, y equals f of x, some function, is continuous at an interior point C. I don't know what point it is. It's called x equals 7 x equals 8, x equals negative 3. That's what we're going to say c is, some value for x. Okay. At some point along my line here, these red dots that I put here, the function is continuous on its domain if the limit when x approaches c actually equals what the function output is when you input c in for x. So what am I saying here? What I'm saying here, when I have something like this, okay, and I have a function, f of x equals x squared, okay, what is f of 3? Nine. I take 3 and I square, right? So whatever f of 3 would be would have to be the same thing, okay? It would be continuous, which equals 9, if the limit as x approaches 3 of the function is also equal to 9. Okay? So you take the limit, and it should equal the same value if you were to plug in that for x. All right? Okay? You guess. You mean you don't know. All right. Again, this gets a little bit easier when we start actually applying it. The terminology gets a little hazy. So let's look at the endpoints. Okay, a function is continuous yeah, yeah, at a left endpoint A, or is continuous at a right point B. Let's call them A and B. Yeah. As you approach the limit from the right. It equals what that value is if you plug it in. Okay? As you approach it from the left, uh-huh, uh-huh, oh, go away. Okay, okay. I can't get it. That's a little minus sign there in case you can't see it. All right? And, and this is just, let's do these. Don't freak out until we start doing these. Uh, a lot of the terminology, or whatever the case might be, I get it because I've taught it. I know what's coming. You don't know what's coming yet. This is where stuff starts to come together. All right. In the case you didn't know, there's a plus here. I mean, but I think this is a little bit more obvious. All right. So, <sighs> is y equals int x? This is our graph. It's that step graph. Int x. Okay. I don't know why they use it a lot. It's a continuous at x equals three. Okay, here's where x equals 3 right here. It's a continuous right here. Okay, so in order for it to be continuous, not only should the limit 
as acts of protest three of Inks acts that should equal what the ints of three is. It should be the same. Let's do the easy part. What is this right here? When I plug a three into my function, what's the y value? Okay, when x is three, it's right here, isn't it? It's not here, it's a hole. It's right here, so what's the y value here? It's also three, isn't it? So this equals three. All right, now let's find the limit. As I approach three from the right and left side, it should approach the same number, shouldn't it? Does this? No, oh, as I approach three from the right, okay, that is three. But look what happens when I approach it from the left. That's at two. So what happens if it approaches two different values from the left and the right? It's not, it does not exist. Are those equal? No. So is it continuous? No, it's not continuous. How come? Well, uh, because you say the limit as x approaches 3 of its x does not equal whatever the ints of 3 is. The limit doesn't equal the actual values. Think about it, children. Yeah, see, when we start to do it, it's gonna, I'm going to do something that's even simpler. I'm going to break off this for a second. It's not in your notes. I just want you to watch. Okay? Here we go. We'll call this one, two, three. We'll go one, two, four. Now, I'm going to draw a graph. It has a hole at four, two. See this? That's at four, two. So I can do anything else, la, 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 la. Now, is that continuous at x equals 4? What's the limit as I approach 4 of this function? As I go from the right and from the left, does it approach the same value? Yeah. 2. The limit as x approaches 4 is 2. Is that equal to... The function at, at, what is the value of my function? We'll call this h of x. What's h of core? It's undefined. There is no value there, isn't it? It's undefined. So there, it is not continuous. But watch what happens. All I'm going to do is one simple thing. I'm not going to make there a hole there anymore. Now what's h of 4? It's 2, isn't it? Wait, how does that work? What do you mean, how does that work? Okay. What's the limit right now without any hole there? What's the limit? As I approach from the right and left side, it's 2. Now, what's actually h of 4? Forget limits. What is the value of y when I plug 4 in? 2, is it? Bam. If they're the same number, it's continuous. Think about it. This has to go this way actually be a value here and continue. If it's a straight line, it's continuous. Kind of draw it without picking up my pen or pencil. It's continuous. If I have a hole here, and I go this way, and I got to pick up my pencil, put it back down, and continue it, that is not continuous. But how can we do that mathematically? If the same number it approaches here is the same value as it approaches here, and it actually has a point here, that means that as I go from right to left, and there's a connecting point, it's continuous. Yeah? Yeah. 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 All right. Now I give you so now I just give you something easy. Now we're gonna step it up a bit. Now, continuity at a point. They give you this whole big function here, f of x, and they, it's a piecewise function. But you know what's nice? They actually give us the graph. So I would much rather look at the graph. We could do it algebraically, but we have the graph. Tell us f of negative 1 exists. If I were to put negative 1 into the function, do I get a value, or is there a hole there, or an asymptote? Let's look at our graph. Where is negative 1? Right here is where x is negative 1. 
that no, that was at a point. Does it exist? Yes, it does. There's an, actually a point there. There is no hole, no asymptote. Does the Linux, as we approach negative one from the right, exist? So as I approach this way, what does it approach on the Y value? That's on the X, it approaches zero on the Y, doesn't it? Yes. It's zero. The exists, yes, it's zero. Does the limit, as we approach negative one from the right, which is zero, equal what the function actually is at negative one? Yes. So is it continuous at negative one? Yes. Damn. Yeah, that's okay. Does everybody get that? Oh, we'll, we'll try some problems by ourselves. We'll try some problems. All right. So that that's not bad. I mean, that's basically all it is. Is the limit the same as the actual value of function? Yes. Continuous. Continuous. Wow. So. There are different identities for discontinuities. We, we, we recognize certain discontinuities. We're going to do this. This first one here, this is actually continuous. I can draw that straight line without lifting up my pencil once. All right? I can do it. Because there's a dot there. That is not a hole. That is a straight line. In fact, it is continuous. It is continuous. Why is the second graph on the top not continuous. There is a hole. I cannot go from the right side of this graph to the left without picking up my pencil. Okay? And we call that, that is a hole. It is discontinuous. That is called a removable discontinuity. Okay? That is called a removable discontinuity because we literally took what was out of there and took it out. We removed it. That's why there's a hole. Okay? What else, children? What's the next one? You see how there's a hole here? And then they put the dot up here at 2? There's a hole right here. But then they put the dot here. So if I want to know what the function is at x equals 0, it's not 1, it's actually 2. The limit is 1. It approaches 1 from the right. It approaches one from the left, but that doesn't actually equal what the function's value is when x is zero. So when x is zero, it's actually two. So that is not continuous there. That is also called a removable discontinuity. It's a second version of a hole. Sometimes it's a hole, and sometimes it's a hole where they put that point somewhere else. Yeah, can I draw that without picking up my pencil? Can I draw that without picking up my pencil? You have to pick up your pencil, so it's not continuous. Can I continually move my pencil through the whole graph without picking it up? <laughs> not without picking it up, because you need to go here. I mean, you can go around here, go like this, try and trace back to the bottom, but that, that's not what I'm talking about. And you know it. All right. So these are two removables. On the homework, I think they ask you to identify if something is removable, just not to do it or not. They don't ask you to say, is it discontinuous or not? They just ask, it. well, they ask, is it? And then if it's not, is it a removable discontinuity or not? So it would have to be a hole. This next one, it kind of looks like a stop, doesn't it? It comes this way, and there's a hole. So this one's filled in, and then we continue this way, right? That is called a junk discontinuity because the hole. Line here just jumps up, bam. That's why it's called a jump discontinuity. Oh, yeah. yeah, because I can't draw that without jumping my pencil. I can't continuously draw that graph without looking at my pencil, so it can't be continuous. Oh, this one. This one. <laughs> and then. I have something like this. Obviously, there's like an asymptote. 
an asymptote somewhere probably right here. It, they will go up forever. Guess what? That is called an infinite discontinuity. It will go up forever. You're like, then that means I can't lift a pencil up and go up forever. But you can't draw the other side up forever without picking up your pencil, can you? That's called an infinite discontinuity. Alright, the last one here. This is a rare form of breed. And I just show this to you uh, just because it's in the book. This is called an oscillating discontinuity. You see how the graph just kind of goes up and down, up and down, kind of like a it's reading an earthquake or uh, brain activity or whatever. It does something so funky in the middle here. It goes blah, 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 Like that. You don't even know what the heck is going on there. So they just call that an oscillating, because oscillating is back and forth. An oscillating discontinuity. You might see one on the homework, but... Oh. Yeah, like it's... I would have put that one on a test for you. All right? Huh, thank you. All right, so let's go a little bit deeper into continuous functions. A function is continuous on an interval if and only if it is continuous at every point on that interval. Meaning it, it has to be that line. It has to connect, okay? Now, a function is continuous, okay? A function is considered continuous if it's one that is continuous on every point of its domain. Now, here's the million dollar question. Can a function be continuous and have a point of discontinuity? Can it be continuous and not have a point of discontinuity, I guess? It actually can. Let me explain to you one of the rare instances, okay? Because the big thing is, it has to be on every point of its domain. Okay, let's take a look. Let's take a look at 1 over x. There is obviously a what? One right down the y-axis. An asymptote is obviously going right here. So you're like, well, it is this, there is a point of discontinuity. But the function can still be considered continuous as long as it is continuous at every point on its domain. So how can that be considered continuous? Let me explain. Is y equals 1 over x to this function? It is. How come? Look at the definition above of its domain. It's continuous at every point on its domain. Zero is not in the domain here, is it? I cannot, zero isn't in the domain, right? Because I would make that undefined. So zero is that line going up and down. But everywhere else, every positive number, negative number, you know, whether it's rational or irrational or whatever, it's continuous on it. Because zero is not in its domain. Zero is not in its domain, so we don't got to worry about whether it's continuous or not at zero. Does that make sense? Correct. In fact, asymptote at for a hole at negative four, it would not be continuous as a hole. Zero is not in its domain here. If I did it in the domain, I would say x cannot equal zero. It's all real numbers except x is zero. X is zero is this line here. This is the only area I don't have to worry about its continuity. Okay. I gotta worry about its continuity everywhere else but zero. Zero is the only place it's not continuous. Everywhere else it is. So as long as it's continuous everywhere else that's in its domain, then it's continuous. Is there a point of discontinuity? Yes, at x equals zero. But zero is not in the domain, so that really doesn't come into play. So it can be continuous and have a point of discontinuity. If there's a hole or something, no. Now, something like this there is. This is rare. 